Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely and talented and not tired at all, wife, Miss Southern <laughs> Shell. Shell, you've been editing some videos this week. Are you are you are you wore out? Um, I, we've been editing a lot. We've doubled up on our videos. We've tried is, to, man. Yeah. Quarantine cooking, you got to get them in. Yeah. What else are we going to do? Sit there and look at each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or teach homeschool. And, oh, I've about homeschooled that. out. Yeah. I know, man. Thank God for teachers. I swear. We uh, they do not make enough. They money. don't make enough money. I do not, but it is a job. I can't imagine. I think I may have said this. I, don't, I can't imagine having a classroom full of 10 year olds, Michael's <laughs> age, and then trying to get all of them on the same page to learn something. I don't know how they do it. Um, I, I over, I overhear them when they're doing their little zoom meetings. Yeah. It's just chaos. I know. I bet it's like that the whole time. I would drive myself crazy. I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd lose it. Yeah. You'd see me on the news and choke the kid or something. I can't take it. So pulled pork. Hey, this week, yeah, we did never fail, guaranteed to blow you away. My pulled pork recipe, and pulled, it's so easy. Pulled pork sandwiches. That was it. It was a. I made a jumbo pulled pork sandwich or a large pulled pork sandwich, sometimes called. But the key to it is Not knowing how to cook that pork butt slow enough to where the fat renders and melts. And it leaves the meat just surrounded by liquid goodness on the inside. <laughs> so you don't have to inject it or anything. You know, you could, but you don't have to. Just put some. So let me go through my recipe real quick. I uh, started. Yeah. Well, first, you had problems sourcing it. I couldn't find any pork butts. Everybody, you know, uh, what was it? Two weeks ago on a Saturday, I, I found a tiny one and I cooked it. I cooked it. Um, I got it from Super Low on another click and pull deal. I was like, yeah, they got butts there. I know they always have some good ones. They're very fresh or something, you know, and they're real big. And so I put it on my click list, pick it up, and I think it may have weighed four and a half pounds. It was the smallest <laughs> little pork butt. It did have a but, bone, right? And then what got me mad, though, was my buddy Tater. He he called me the night before and was asking me some questions. He said, man, I got two. I, I found two pork butts at Kroger. And I was like, man, he did. I was all excited. They got them. He's like, yeah, they got a ton of them. So I go to the click list. Of course, they ain't got any. Yeah. But I told him I'd cook his for him, so he brought his over. And two weeks ago, I cooked three. I cooked the, my baby butt, and I cooked his too. And then the baby one just got me hungry for pork. <laughs> so, I so when another week goes by, Sam's doesn't have any. Put them on my click list there. Trying to you know, Walmart doesn't have any. There's no, there's no pork butts around. Yeah. So I called up Kevin down at the butcher shop because I you know he's been selling meat like it's going crazy. He swears there's not going to be a pork a meat shortage. I mean. Maybe these big stores are having one, but you're not seeing it on the butcher level. Yeah. So he said he's got pork butts. No, he said, what kind do you want? You want Berkshire? You want Duroc? <laughs> you want commodity? I was like, man, I just want some regular old pork butts. Commodity's fine with me. Just, you know, he's like, I got, you know, I'm sent, he's going to send me two. So he sent me two, and they were beautiful. I mean, you saw them on the video. They were monsters. They were probably, I didn't weigh them, and it don't have a sticker on it when I get it. It's just a double pack. But if I had to guess, that thing weighed over 10. I bet it was close to 11. It was huge. It was. It was huge. It had a big muscle on it. Monster it money. Beautiful. The other one was too, and I cut it up, ground it, and I'm going to use it for some R&D on our uh, new sausage seasons I'm coming out with. Those are in the freezer in one-pound packages. I thought, what did it make, 10, pa- 10 one-pound packages mm-hmm. when we ground it? Um I imagine, you know, when you were grinding it, you're also adding a little ice in there, you know, to keep the grinder from overheating, things like that. So I imagine we added a little volume. Yeah, but not much. Not I didn't, much. I didn't lose much. I just cut the bone out and we cubed yeah. it up. But back to the never fail pork, pork butt. Yep. Didn't inject it. I just seasoned the outside. I put a little bit of a binder on it. So there was a time when you would inject everything years ago. Yeah. I mean... You went through. Yeah. That was a competition phase <laughs> when everything had to be over the top. Yeah. And you were just enhancing it all. And you were putting, you know, putting cures on it to try to get mm-hmm. some false flavor on it. And you were getting away from the goodness of the pork. Yeah. You know, it's all about, to me now, I'm not, I'm not a purist, but I love the meat, the smoke, and the right seasonings. And that's all you need. It's just simple. And I think simple is where it's at. Yeah. 
when I go back to comp cooking later in the year, I'm going back simple. I'm not doing all the injecting and all the crazy stuff. I'm just cooking good barbecue. That's my new mission. I've and have fun and cook good barbecue. Who's getting at you? Uh, Candice <laughs> Riles, actually. Uh, <laughs> but that's but that's my so that's what and this was this is what I do when I cook a pork and a pork butt. It turns out the best. I, this, the least I do yeah. to it. Yeah, I agree. And that's and what the same this thing recipe. Ribs, yeah, too. same thing with ribs. That's what and that's what this recipe was about. It was about simple technique. Time in the temp, and then finishing it up. That was all super easy. You used mustard. <clears throat> I did use a little mustard. wasn't a whole lot. I mean, I just you know thin coat on the outside to help the rub stick. It helps it stick, but it also it also shows you where you're putting rub, so you can get everything coated the way you want it without having to cake it up. So, so I like that aspect of it. When do you use a binder, and when do you not use a binder? Do you have like a rule? No, it's how I, depends on how I'm feeling. <laughs> I felt like using some mustard that day. Yeah. <laughs> I usually do on pork butts. I usually don't on ribs, but I do on pork butts because you know a lot of times on ribs I do you know use a couple different seasonings and I'll just let the ribs set out and kind of tack up on their own with the butt. And the ribs you got a top and a bottom. Yeah, you know it's easy to apply seasoning on the butt. You turn it around, flippy floppy in yeah. it, and all that. And, and I want a better <laughs> bark on my butt anyway, and the mustard helps make the bark. Sometimes it can get it too sticky on some ribs. We used to use it on ribs. Heck, I've used it on brisket before, but you never see me, you know, doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, only, only about the only thing I'll use the mustard on now is whole, you know, whole shoulders, pork butts, whole hog, it large cuts of pork. Yeah, it's, it works really well. When you're wanting to make a yeah good bark, that's it. it and and, and want to make a good bark, and you want to see it where see where you're applying the rub. Yeah, make sure you got the coverage you want. Um, that's all. You don't taste the mustard. Gives it absolutely. Zero taste. I've you never could not tell. Mustard. You could not yeah. tell that I put mustard on it. You couldn't tell that it had anything like that. Other, you know, other than bark on the outside from the seasoning. Can, can you get? Too, I've seen people get a little too heavy with the mustard. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. You know, I've seen folks take that big gallon jug yeah. of it and just dump it all over it. And the duckers double fisted, coated in mustard, <laughs> slung everywhere. Did it change the way their pork tastes? No, I mean it just yeah. don't do it. It melts right off. And, the rub sticks to it and makes a bark. So, do you have other things you use aside from mustard ever? Um, recently, I started spritzing with water, kind of letting it tack up on some ribs. When I did the meat, uh, yeah. meathead ones, and that worked, that trick worked really well. I've used peanut oil before, I've used like honey mustard before on chicken. We used mayo before, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We've tried all kinds of stuff, yeah. <laughs> And they all work. They do. I mean, they all work. Do you remember? Back- and I've done a lot of it with nothing, and it works, yeah. You know? So, it's that, it's that, just, that's not really part of the technique, the mustard. If you skip that, you're not going to hurt yourself. If you use another rub, you're not going to hurt yourself. The fact, the thing to me was you want to get a decent tasting seasoning on the outside. It needs uh, it needs some salt because pork needs yeah, salt, a large yeah. cut like that. It needs a little bit of sugar, kind of balance it to make a good bark. That sugar kind of melts and caramelizes, and that's what starts getting dark on you, gives you that color. And then you need some spice, and that comes from the peppers and the chili powders and the paprika and all that in it. And all that blended together makes a pretty colored bark on the outside, and that's all you need in a rub. There's a you know a bunch of good ones out there, but my hot one is one of my uh, favorites on straight pork butt. I, I actually have that as a note. The hot rub is my favorite on pork. On pork, yeah, because I, I mean, you don't the, need to. Com- it's not a you don't need a combo. Yeah, no, you really don't. You really don't. You don't have to have the AP underneath. The hot rub's got plenty of salt in it, and for and just eating pork, color. for eating pork, it's all you need. It's all you need. There's a lot of great ones out there, though. I mean, use whatever you want. That's that's you know the way my yeah. stuff is. Use whatever you want. So I got the rub and on the outside. Then it was time to fire up the, the, the drum. Why'd and you pick the drum? Because I wanted the best tasting pork butt I could make. <laughs> and I will argue with anybody that you cannot beat that flavor on a drum by the fat melting and dripping over those hot... Now, if you had another grill where the fat drips down on the coals, yeah. It doesn't have to be the drum. It don't have to be a drum. It's it just needs to be that set up. Yeah. It, can you cook the pork on a pellet grill, on the Weber kettle, on my old hickory, on the, on Jolene, the stick burner? Yeah, I could have cooked it on anything. But when I'm cooking one that's... I really want to taste the absolute authentic bar pit barbecue like I love, I go to that drum, especially for cooking one. Now, if you're trying to cook six... Hang it up. I ain't doing that on drum. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll go to a different smoker for that. You're going to the old hickory. Or the, or the stick burner, yeah. something bigger. 
But for one butt, I, I put I put my one butt drum up against anybody. Well, you did three butts on it. Yeah, it'll do. It was crowded though. When you yeah, get them wrapped, it was. three gets crowded. I don't like to cook on multiple layers, butt. even though you can. But two is about maxed out, really. <laughs> so when you cooked your ribs, you fold half the fire basket and you rotated it, but right. you didn't do that with this. No, cook. because the butt's so much bigger, it don't need it. It can take it can take the drippage and the coals and the heats, you know, controlled. And you had a the ribs. Factor. I don't want to burn the I don't want to burn the bottom of them up, or you know, when you flip them over and cook them meat down in the full, I don't want it to get. I don't want to risk it getting too hot on them. That's why I cook them like that with ribs. But yeah. butts, you don't have to do that. And you had a serious fat cap on that one. A serious one. And it rendered it down beautifully. It did. It was nice. It was really nice. You know, sometimes y'all score that fat cap. Yeah, when I cook it, like some smokers, if I cook them on drum, or not on drums, on pellet grills, or on the old hickory or something like that, where the heat's coming from the top, I'll cook it fat up. And then I'll score that fat because it makes delicious little bites of fat and meat. You know, you just kind of, <laughs> you can pull them off and they're just, it's almost like a, a pork chicharron and you cook yeah. right there on the, on the pork butt or the shoulder, you know. Yeah. Anyway, and it's, it's really good, but cooking them upside down, it won't do that. Really, it's all about protecting and letting that fat melt, and it just kind of covers that that false false cap or that bacon meat of the mm-hmm. sh- you know the pork butt that we talk about. Mm-hmm. That's that's some of the best meat on there, mm-hmm. and and you need that much <laughs> fat on it. Don't trim that fat off when you're uh-uh. cooking it like that. And comps, a lot of times we you know on our show butts or the ones we're trying to get our money muscles on, and we'll we'll cut all that off, and we're just cooking them for the money muscle. Yeah. You know? But on, when no. I'm eating butt, I'm not touching. I didn't trim that at all. See, I, I checked think... the sides to see if there was any gland in it, and there wasn't anything in those butts. Sometimes you find a gland in there, and sometimes you don't. But what do you what do you mean by glands? Yeah, I don't know if it's like part of the endocrine system on a hog or what it is, but it's but just like can... a little mass. It's a, it looks like a gland. You can tell what it looks like. Yeah, looks like a little I don't know about the size of your thumb, little gray piece of meat looking mass like a little tumor or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we call them glands. Yeah. It is a gland. It's probably it is. part of the uh, endocrine system, I guess, or something. <laughs> what, they don't have like blood vessels and stuff running to it. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know. But they, uh, you find them in the, in the shoulders and the hands and the, you know, when you're trimming the hog, you find them. What wood did you use? I used, so I got the drum going and I did have a guru on it to hold the temp steady. Yeah. yeah. I set it for like 265 or 260, 265, yeah. let it stay right in there. Well, were you cooking the, you, you cooked the butt at a lower temp than you did your ribs, correct? Yeah, because I know I want it to take longer. I want to slow it down. I want that cook to slow down some. So I really want it to stay around, you know, 250, 250 265. If it crept up to 275, uh, it's no big deal. Honestly, I never looked at the temp one time that day. I went straight by color. I went out there and looked at it. We sprayed it. You know, after about an hour and 45 minutes, I started spraying it. And every 30 minutes, I'd go look at it. As soon as I saw it was starting to get dark, it kind of started getting dark on that one side on top. That's when it was time to wrap it. And I did have some hickory and I had some cherry wood in there on the coals. That was giving me my smoke. And then um, when I wrapped it up, I took the easy way. The easiest way you can wrap a pork butt. Drop it in an aluminum pan, cover it with full. Put a little bar- I did put a little vinegar sauce in there. Mm-hmm. Um I learned to do that because a lot of times we would just wrap a button up, put anything in there, just wrap it up, put it back on. When you unwrap it, it is ugly as it can be. Yeah. <laughs> but adding that vinegar sauce, it kind of already starts a glazing process. It cooks over it. It thins down. It makes the top of it look beautiful it when does. you unwrap it. So that was something we picked up in comp cooking. And I still, you know, I use it to this day. But, you know, the vinegar sauce goes so good on a pork butt wrapped like that. I mean, it comes it, out already. And, and then all the, ju- the juice that cooks out. Is mixed with that vinegar sauce, and man, it really makes a good pork dip. If you if you want to get the fat off of it and strain it, and use that to you know dress your meat with when you're doing comps, it's really good. Um, I don't use it at home because we just mix some sauce with it right there, you know, before we put it up or eat it. Do you uh, think that cooking it in the pan helps catch catch those drippings better than? Oh yeah, yeah. For some reason, now I've never measured it. Like when you wrap it in full, it's gonna it's gonna be a ton of juice, but I think you do end up losing some. How do always because you, you end up just, tearing the full or just yeah, you know it doesn't for some out. reason yeah but some reason when you put it in that pan man it'll make a pan full of juice <laughs> it will I've never and I've never really measured it but that would be interesting to, to do one see wrapped up tight and then do one in the pan and then pour it out and measure and see which one rendered more. I'm with you, though. I don't know if you could actually catch everything just wrapped up. It's hard to. I mean, you end up with a lot of juice, but it doesn't seem like it ends up with that, that much. much. I would have yeah. guessed there's probably 
16 ounces yeah, of drippings in that up. pan. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot. It was when we took when I pulled the pork butt out, it was still two inches deep. Or I don't know if it's two, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because it had a lot of juice in that pan. <laughs> when you pulled it off the pit, it started. It was spilling pollution. out over the yeah. side. Yeah, it was up to the top. You know, <laughs> it the, we pulled, yeah, it couldn't hold anymore. <laughs> it held anything else? Yeah, it was, and that was all that was rendering out of that butt. There was no extra, you know, other than the the sauce yeah. that I poured over the top. That was it. Did you ever? Wrap pork butts with like the butter, brown sugar, honey. Have you ever tried that? I've, I've tried it. I ain't crazy about it. I don't think it needs all that. Um, you know, I've tried all different kinds of stuff wrapping it with. We, you know, wrapped it with pineapple juice or apple juice and butter and all that. And it used to, we used to baste it a lot with some like a, it was almost like a barbecue vinaigrette, we called it. Yeah. Like Italian dressing rub, uh, with shower, soy. Oh, yeah. I remember y'all uh, doing that. Some water. And then we'd mix a little bit of barbecue sauce to thin it down, you know, to add, give some barbecuiness to it and add some. See, dry seasoning, and then that was what we based everything with. And in Memphis and May, we still do with shoulders. Yeah. We use something like that. Um, but for cooking at home and cooking just a good old pork butt, you don't need it. <laughs> you really don't. It's about the meat, man. It's about the meat and the smoke. No, That's onions. what I want to stress. No, uh, You could have put onions on the fire. Yeah. I didn't. I just ran it. I put it on there. I come back and sprayed it every once in a while. Panned it. Stuck me a dot thermometer probe in there. Close the lid, and I didn't go back until the dot, until the little app, my Thermalworks app, reading from the blue dot, told me it was 200 degrees. I was sitting in my recliner. <laughs> you got it working? Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> and the, the dot always works with it, oh, no okay. problem. As long as I stay by the window in the in the chair, you know, if I stay right there, it picks up fine. When it hit 200 degrees, it was time to go out and glaze mm-hmm. it. And I, that kept that simple. 50-50 sauce and vinegar. The barbecue sauce and vinegar sauce. You kept it on a pan? I took it. I took it out of the. I carefully took it out. <laughs> it about broke. I mean, you see, yeah. it cut a little piece of it broke, and I set it on a. I flipped up a chicken rack on side a little sheet pan, set the butt over there, and then glazed it with the fifty fifty sauce combo. Put it back on the pit for about twenty minutes, and just I, at that point, I didn't care what. I was just trying to cool the temp down. I didn't want it to be two sixty. Yeah. So I just like I just pulled it and opened up, cracked it a little bit, and then it was, it was glazed perfect. At two twenty, you know, but uh, at, in about twenty minutes, yeah. the glaze perfect. Um, I think that's something oh, a step a lot of people skip. The glazing, yeah, yeah. I see a lot of people do that, even in comps. They don't put the meat back on with the sauce, but I yeah. think that's where you that's where you pick back up your appearance score. It makes it look so good when you cl- when you cook that sauce on it, sets that bark. I and, think it sets the bark, and, and it gives your bark a better flavor. Oh, yeah, it does. It, it, it picks up a little bit. If there's any smoke left, it'll pick up a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. That's a great tip if you want to. If you do want to add some extra smoke on it, throw you a little another chunk of wood on there when you get ready to set that glaze. But you got to watch it. You can't leave it too long because that sauce is like a magnet to smoke. Mm-hmm. It will soak it up. So if you put something harsh on there, uh, you know it can it can really get overboard. I like to use apple or peach or something like yeah. that. Something That's a little wild. tip that a lot of the comp guys do. Yeah. They won't oh, yeah. add a lot of smoke to the front end, but they'll throw it in. And the back end and pick it up mm-hmm. and use the sauce to soak it in and, and absorb it. Kind of tricky. And then you got is. the, yeah, then you, the first thing they taste, <laughs> the first thing they taste is that sauce yep. with the smoke on it. And so it sets the tone for the piece of meat. Oh, they got a ton of smoke in that, yeah. which really probably didn't. <laughs> so you, uh, but I dig. I mean, that, the smoke ring on that port butt was awesome. It was. I mean, it was two and a half, three inches thick in some places. I mean, that, it was just a beautiful port butt. It was it a was. big, beautiful port butt. And then I, you know, I let it rest after I took it off the glaze, and then I pulled it, and then I made my little pork sandwich. It pulled like a drain too. Oh yeah, I just muscle it out, yeah, yeah and, and take you know take what fats off and shred it up by hand. And, try to keep myself from eating too much of it. <laughs> As you go, yeah. yeah. You know when you're pulling the butt apart and you can feel it and you just know those pieces are good. Nope. It's like not all, you know, when we're doing comps, not all the pieces of pork are good. You got to know where to get it. We've cooked them for specific areas to be good, but then when you're going through it and everything's feeling right, and like, oh, it's just, it's a habit. It tells, it just goes to my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> for, <laughs> well, when we were, I feel like I could pull a pork butt with my eyes closed. Yeah. I've done it so many times, you know, in comps. That was my job at comps. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Pull the pork butt, you know, catering, all the stuff that we've done. But the way I would always tell that, you know, it's not over. You take that pork butt in some spots to the verge of being almost overcooked. Yeah, you like know, it's, like it the turns fat to mush. Cap, yeah. the money muscle, things like that. So you got to test for tenderness. So that would, um, I'd always pop a little piece in my mouth. See Check it, it for tenderness. Yeah. 
because you don't want it mushy. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, heck no, that'll kill you. It's over. It's overdone if it's mushy, right? Yeah, and I liked how you showed about the fa- the false cap. Right. The, that meat underneath that that fat cap. That is the best. That is, I mean, you only get like I don't know two ounces of meat. Maybe it's not much, uh-uh. yeah, but it's the best bite on there. Isn't yeah. It? When it's cooked right, that's. When that fat just comes right off, scrapes right off of it, oh. and leaves you with that, and it, oh, it tastes because so it's good. like a layer of fat on top and a layer of fat. It's sandwich. It's lean yeah. sandwiched in between, just like some belly off mm-hmm. off the hog. That's what it tastes. I mean, yeah, it tastes like. And that. I, you know, I don't. I always say that it's kind of the way, the way that shoulder sits on there and the butts up top, the side meat from the belly kind of runs yes. up there, so it's got to be trailing off of that. that you know. Yeah. Is what it is. Part, I mean, it's in that You've same. You've always told me that. I thought, yeah. yeah, I think. I mean, it's it, it's got to. So I've always called it the bacon of the butt. Yeah, the butt bacon. bacon. <laughs> butt bacon. <laughs> That's what it is. So let me tell you about the pulled pork sandwich. Now you got to have a good slaw to make a pulled pork sandwich my way. That's kind of a Southern Memphis area thing. Creamy slaw. I like a creamy slaw. Yep. I don't want a mustard in my slaw. Got to be mayonnaise base. I'm a, Easiest slaw recipe you could ever make. You know, I threw it up on the screen. It's half a cup. So you make the dressing first. You make your put your wet ingredients together first, and then mix it. That way you don't mess it up. But half a cup of mayo, a couple tablespoons of sugar, just white sugar, a couple tablespoons of cider vinegar, salt, pepper, ground celery. Now I use celery my, seed. Celery seed, ground celery yeah. seed. That's all it is. Those ingredients and whisk that up in a bowl till. The lumps are all out of the mayo. It's smooth. Put your. We buy the slaw. It's like an already dry slaw that you yeah, get in the produce section. Yeah, it's a sixteen ounce bag. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's it called? Coleslaw mix. Yeah, or coleslaw whatever. mix. And it's just cab. It's got a little cab. It's it's all cabbage with a little bit of carrot and a little bit of like uh, radicchi purple cabbage in there, right? That's all it is. Yeah. And we put that in a ziploc, a gallon ziploc bag. Put the dressing in there, the slaw dressing. Mix it around your hands. Stick it in the refrigerator for an hour. When you're ready to serve it, just bring it out, dump it in a bowl, and stick a set of tongs in it, and it's ready to go. It's really easy if you're taking it to a barbecue somewhere, tailgate, yeah. just keep it in the bag till you get wherever you're going. And you, can, and you can multiply that easy. Mm-hmm. Everything doubles. Like if you were using the big Sam's bag, you would just double the wet the wet or yeah. two bags from Kroger, you'd double it. I mean, and there's some coleslaw mixes that are just the slaw, like the angel. It's really thin. Yeah, of, just uh, the cabbage. No, just no the carrots, cabbage, no radicchio. Yeah. yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, I do too. We um, used to do one, and so we got the creamy slaw. Yeah, you got the creamy slaw. You got your jumbo hamburger bun. It's yep. got to be the jumbo, and don't mess, don't make me mad with one of those little small hamburger buns. <laughs> jumbo bun, a mound of that fresh pulled pork right there from the board. Paint it with the sauce that we glazed with. Mm-hmm. Put your coleslaw on the top bun. Slap it over on it. <laughs> don't squish it. Just slap it over on it and get back off of it. And then you're ready. That's all yeah. you need. And you pick it up and go to town. You wrap it up in full and sell it for fifteen bucks. Fifteen dollars <laughs> at least. That sandwich right there, I would I wouldn't have took fifteen dollars for it. Nope. You just got to wait till I it's get through. Good. It was good. It was really good. And that's an easy recipe, and it's it never fails. It's that good every single time. As simple as it is. And if anybody's got a smoker, you need to learn how to cook a pork butt like yeah. that. There's nothing to it. You got to give yourself some time. Don't rush it. Make sure it gets to 200 degrees. When I mean, you can go back and watch some old videos, we take butts off at 190 or 195 or 198. That's because we're really babying them and watching them for sp- for specific uh, muscles in that butt to be done where we want it. But if you want it done and want it to make the best pulled pork, the whole butt, Consistent all the way across. Take it to 200 internal. and It'll be there every single time. There's nothing to it. Nothing worse than trying to pull a tough Tight cord. butt. Yep, yeah, it don't work. You want it jiggly. That's the way I like mine. <laughs> I don't want one of them tight ones. I ain't good for nothing but slicing on. Uh, so who's got the best pull, pull, pulled pork sandwich at a restaurant? Man, that's tough. That you've ever had. <clears throat> that I've ever had? I'll tell you what mine is. Where? It's a scary, scary place. <laughs> in Memphis? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you need a cut more vest. It's Payne's. Payne's. Yeah. In Memphis. Payne's has Man, a good one. A, I don't know. But it has that authentic it does. pit flavor. It does. You better I'll, bring cash and don't expect a whole lot. I walk. And go in daylight. Every, it's only open yeah. Daylight. It's only open. They close at like 3 or 4 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. 
when I walk the first time I walked in, I was so confused. There's no signs. You don't know where to go. Nobody says, "Can I help you?" You yeah. know, <laughs> they just no. Oh, it's just assume you know. You, yeah, you get, you get up there and you better be ready, right? Yeah. My favorite, best one, just straight pulled pork. Not like going off a hog, because I got another one for hog I'll give you here in a minute. But I'd have to say it's not open anymore, I don't think. It's, it was called Morrison's Grocery out, way out uh, in Shelby County. I don't it's, think I ever went there. We used to go. We'd drive when I was working at the architect firm out there off Canada Road. <clears throat> we'd go out there for lunch, and it's still a you know, 20, 30-minute drive from out at Canada Road. And that's way outside. So, but they had it was the better best. than Payne's. Oh yeah, hands. Oh yeah, you really? you get it pulled and crunchy, and it was just man, it was so. Did they good. put salt on it too? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was so good. Now I'm gonna give you some runners up though. Okay. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, Tops Barbecue. Yeah. Makes a killer pulled pork sandwich in Memphis. Yeah. And they don't. I don't even think they use rub. <laughs> they just put pork <laughs> shoulders on the-, on the smoker. You can tell when they're smoking because you can smell it from miles away. You follow the smoke and then go in there and get them to make you a jumbo pulled pork sandwich. Ask for it pulled because yeah. if you don't, they'll just chop it all up, and I don't like it chopped up. I don't. Your either. sauce isn't bad either because it's kind of has like a I don't know. It's not a traditional like sweet sauce. It, it's more tangy. It's, it's kind of orangey, so you might, makes me think it's got some mustard or something in yeah. it. Yeah. But that one and pain uh, the barbecue shop on Texas toast. They serve theirs. You can get it on bun or Texas toast. I get it on Texas toast. They're buttered grilled Texas toast. But their pulled pork is really good, and their slaw. That's the bar. They put shop. they put slaw on it too. Yeah, yeah. All these sandwiches you got. Yeah, they put slaw, slaw on. Them. Yeah. Another good one. Neely's surprise. The Interstate Barbecue. They do have. They a good have one. a pulled pork sandwich that'll kill you. I mean, it's like a, <laughs> it's like two pounds. You know, you can't pick it up. You better eat it with a fork. It's bigger than yours. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They put way more. But I don't. Yeah. No, they use jumbo bun too. It's a good thing. It comes on like a platter. It ain't just a plate. You get a platter at, Neal- at Interstate, so it's good. But it's not as good as those others. We had a plate. I'm not crazy about their sauce. Their meat's good, but the sauce isn't that great. So Where, I mean, a lot uh, of times, like, you got to tell them, don't put sauce on it. Just put it on the side because they'll you'll have a plate of sauce, and I don't like that. You get you can have a really good pulled pork sandwich, but you put a bad sauce on there. That's right. It's like Corky's. Now, for whole pulled, it's still pulled pork, but it comes from whole hog. Best I ever has Jack's Creek. Up there, close. To, uh, it's uh, outside of Henderson. It's kind of in between Henderson and Lexington, Tennessee. But that's, they're making pulled pork out of whole hogs. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they smoke whole hogs and they shred it up. Is it? It's got. I guess they're still doing that. This is where I grew up. That's like the first barbecue place I remember as a kid. We it's would like go up salt to and vinegar. County. Pretty much the only ingredients they use. Yeah, I don't even know if they use a barbecue rub. It's probably just salt and baste it with vinegar. Yeah. And then when they serve it, they serve it with a real thin. They used to with a real thin. Kind of a Carolina style sauce. It was. It's. It's all the people from that part of Tennessee kind of migrated over from North Carolina. Yeah. So that's how that West Tennessee style of barbecue that I grew up on, that I knew, came from. It all come from those those roots. We need to um, when things open back up, make a pilgrimage. And yeah. Hit we, up you know, we went. We there. went up there. Where were we going to Nashville for something, or maybe we were going to Dwayne's for the I state contest Dwayne, last yeah. summer. And it just happened they were closed. That that was the one day all those places were closed when we were going up through there. But we didn't go there specifically for that. We no, were just we, going to try to hit it up yeah. on the way. And they were closed. No, they were on vacation. That's what it was. It was like we shut down for two weeks for vacation or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, <"Dang> on. <laughs> That's like that horrible place down there it used to be in Florence or in between Florence <laughs> and Richland. You don't talk about the worst. The Motley. The, is that what it was called? Motley's? That's what my mom called it. I think it was called Old Timers Barbecue. That, I hate to call, throw anybody under the bus. That was horrible. <laughs> That's the only place I went to barbecue and they served it to me cold. <laughs> cold barbecue. Quit it's like, it, your pants. I'm sorry. But they acted like that's the way you're supposed to eat it, out of the refrigerator. <laughs> And I, I swear, not even like microwaved or anything. Just out of the refrigerator. Here you go. Here's your pork and make your sandwich. That was the only barbecue place we had. It was dry. My mom loved it. Really? Yes. You got brisket from there. It was cold, too. <laughs> Sliced paper thin. <laughs> That's it's what like, she wanted. I don't know. What's wrong with people? It, it was terrible. That's why I, I said nobody down there knows barbecue. This is what y'all think is good. <laughs> My yeah, dad that. cooked good barbecue, yeah. but... Yeah, Molly's was terrible. My mom was the only one that liked it. But she'd bring it home and put it in the microwave because she was afraid that he picked his nose while he sliced the 
She's skeptical of the man. That's terrible. <laughs> I guess she's going to cook the burger. So she cooked it more. <laughs> I guess she'd rather have it cold. She's going to cook it some more anyway. I hated those uh, sandwiches. They weren't very good. No, they're not. I've had better from Bucky's in the gas station. <laughs> hey, Bucky's had a pretty good pulled brisket sandwich. <laughs> they did, didn't they? Anyway. So that was a pulled pork recipe. That was a that was a good one. We also made a pulled pork sandwich out of some bacon. It was like on you know it wasn't bacon. It was a slab now of pork that, belly. What would you call that? So if the pulled pork sandwich is the best. I'm trying to think. What's something that's over better than the best thing you ever ate? And it's way too indulgent. It ought to be. A, it ought to be like a it sin. Was, yeah. To eat that. You one. need to eat sliders with it. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking slab of belly. Pork yeah. belly. Cook it just like you do a butt. Put your seasons on it. Put it on there. Smoke it. Wrap it up. Get it pull and tender where all the fat's rendered. You can't. All you get is left is this lean meat. And you glaze that just like you did the pork butt. Then you bring it out and then you shred it. And it's these long, just succulent strands of, of belly meat. You need to do that recipe again. I do. And then you put that on a sandwich, but don't eat that on a jumbo to kill you. <laughs> It really will. It'll kill you. Get you, a, get you a little slaughter bun or a little regular size hamburger bun. It is so rich. It is so intense. And it's so good. It, it, is. it is so good. Nobody does that. You don't ever see that very often. I did a video on it years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've done it since like that. I was just like, okay, I've done that. The whole, I don't want to hurt nobody. The whole <laughs> thought process behind it was that you were going to cook it just like, like, like you would get um, hog out of a. Yeah. yeah. Belly out of a hog. I think you cooked a hog and brought the meat home, and we made a sandwich out of some of the belly meat. And you were like, "We got to turn this into a, a video." Yeah, a yeah, video where you can actually cook it at home without cooking a whole hog. Yeah, yeah. and you can believe me, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you think burnt, bacon burnt ends is good? No, you make it that way. It blows. Do you think it's better than the bacon burning or the belly burning? Pork that, belly burning. I in? mean, it's two different things. It almost. is. It's all the succulents of the pork belly burning. Yeah. In. But in like shredded, even, I mean, just even more tender form. Oh man, that's got me wanting some. I got a pork belly in the. In the freezer. We do a chest iron. I could one. do that one day. I could probably split that one and get two things out. Yeah, of it. it's huge. Half belly burn ends versus. You said you were going to use that to slaughters. work on your um, curing your own bacon. Yeah, yeah, I'm planning. But to But you do could that, cut too. it in half and do that cure yeah. part of it. Um. So last weekend was Easter. It was. We had a good. Uh, we did some Instagram cooking on Friday or on Saturday. Mm-hmm. You cooked uh, our Easter I cooked, ham. I cooked, cooked our ham, and if you followed us on Instagram, you saw me do that. I did the same glaze that I did on the the recipe before for the tur- the honey smoked turkey breast. So I basically did a honey smoked ham, except I added a little bit of that uh, Dijon mustard to the glaze because yeah. I like the Dijon flavor on my ham, and it was epic. It, it was, was very good. good. I've been having ham. Every time I go by the refrigerator, I think I get a piece of ham. <laughs> you just grab a piece of ham. I'm going to do something. My plan is for Saturday for some Instagram stuff. Um, I think it'd be great for breakfast. I'm going to do them like a brunch style, but it's those little, what do you call them? Little ham biscuits. Oh, it's yeah. It's really just like, it's like a party food. It's really a party food, but I really think it's a good brunch food. It'll go great for breakfast. Oh, yeah. So it's you're gonna so, use our leftover Easter ham. Yeah, yeah, because I don't want to freeze the rest of it, and there's yeah. just enough left to to make a pan of these little ham biscuits. But what it is, you take like a Hawaiian roll or a little sweet roll, cut them and ha- cut the whole pack in half across. So you got a bottom half and a top half, and then you mix up what is it? Uh, Worcestershire melted butter, little, little poppy seeds, little mustard powder, mm-hmm. not not yellow mustard. Yeah, it makes a sauce. You pour that over some of the bread, and you put your ham down, you put some cheese on it, put your top bread on, then you put some more of that sauce on top, more poppy seeds, I guess. I think everybody's it, right? had those, right? Oh, they're, I don't, they're good. Yeah. And I never had it with Easter honey smoked ham. Uh, that's what I'm having. What kind of cheese? I bought a blend. I ordered it off ClickList. It was like a Swiss and Gruyere Ooh. shred, and I'm just going to dump the whole pack on my ham yes. and put the top bun on it. And and you cut it. You know, they're already kind of sectioned, but when it gets done, you just go back there and cut yep. them again with a knife, and it makes these little bitty ham biscuit sandwiches. They're so good. Man, they're good. They're they're very good. Can you, you can make them a bunch of different I'm going to come up with a new, come up with a beverage for Saturday. I don't okay. know what it's going to be yet. Something good. 
So you had a good Easter? I did. We cooked. We. <laughs> I, I cooked the ham. I cooked the ham. And it was very good. Was, you cooked it on Saturday and then reheated it on Sunday. Yep. And you couldn't tell the difference. Uh-uh, and then uh-uh. I cut it up and arranged it and we ate it. It was, it was tender. It was a good quality ham, you know. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, this is a Smithfield ham I got from Walmart. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, the gold package one. That's, but they were really good. Um, I made. We did cornbread dressing. Yep. Chicken and dressing. Which was really good. It was really good. You helped me with that. You did help me with that one a little. And then. To get my consistency right. But I'll tell you, the key to making a good cornbread dressing is to boil uh, your own chicken, a whole chicken, and reduce that stock and make your own stock. If you don't have your own stock, it's just not going to have the depth of flavor. So if you just use Swanson's out of a box. I mean, it'll get there, but. It's not as rich. It's not as good. Yeah. I did make the chicken gravy. You did? With it. Yeah. It was really good. I used Giblet that same gravy. stock. You saved me like mm-hmm. a half pint of that stock. I mixed it with a little bit of cream of chicken soup. The con- You know, the concentrate mm-hmm. soup's real thick. I kind of thickened my broth up a little bit. And then I seasoned it up with some AP and I did a put a little boiled egg and a little of pulled chicken in it for the you boiled. And it made a good gravy. I did my um, mac and cheese casserole. I'm going to have to share that recipe. That's one. I stole it when I did the <laughs> the. the you would change version. it a little bit. Yeah. Yours was, that macaroni and cheese was some of the best macaroni and cheese ever. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I hadn't had it in a long time. But uh, it was so good. Roasted carrots, butter beans. I did some Texas rolls. Those, if y'all, if y'all haven't tried the Rhodes brand Texas rolls, they come in these little bitty frozen dough balls. They're in the frozen bread section. Yeah, and you put them in a bag. Put them on a sheet pan. I will tell you what we do though, we split them in half and drop them in a muffin pan. Now you got to let them rise about four hours. It, I mean, they'll be coming up out of the pan. And you pop those dudes in the oven and you serve. You put your stick of butter out. Same time you get the rolls <laughs> out of the freezer and let it sit there all day and get room temperature. That with a piece of ham. That's is really good all you need. It's really all you need. So this stick week, with me and I get you fat. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to eat some rolls and ham. So this week your delicious dinner recipe was red beans and rice. Yeah, man, that was that was a good old Monday classic there. Yeah. You know why they do red beans and rice? No, on, I don't on Mondays in, in Louisiana. Because it's wash day and the and a lot of the housewives or you know the ladies. This is old this is Yeah, they were the doing their wash lady. on Mondays yeah. and, and instead of having Spend time in the kitchen. They could throw a pot of beans on, leave them unattended, do the wash, come back, make quick rice. You got dinner on Monday night. Yeah. So that was, that's why. That's the tradition. So a lot of the restaurants you go down to New Orleans or down there, they serve. I mean, a lot of people do it at their home still. Yeah. Monday, Monday night is the night you eat red beans and rice. And I just took basically a, it's just a basic red beans and rice it recipe. Is. It's pretty but basic. I did use the country pleasing sausage yes. two ways. I bought the andouille, the andouille. And that's and the I one bought, that went in. Yeah. Now, now, country pleasing is where it's at in smoked sausage. Now, it's a Florence brand sausage. But it's so good. Oh, it's so good. I, you know, everybody talks about Koneka or and some Koneka's of these other, good. Yeah, but it ain't country pleasing good. <laughs> I promise <laughs> no. you. It ain't country pleasing good. There's only one sausage that's as good as that country pleasing. And it's so, at that, uh, you know, where Vans is. <laughs> And, yes. and Brandon, yes. it's right across the road from Vans at this little grocery store gas st- slash gas station. They make a homemade sausage there. And they, the same, they do deer processing across the street at Vans. And they use the same kind of recipes for the deer stuff over there, but they make that country sausage, the smoked sausage in, in the store. Man, it's so good. But I used the andouille and I used the smoked sausage. Split them lengthwise, grilled them on a PK. And I cut the andouille up into little bitty half moons. How thin. long does it take you to grill them? <clears throat> Man, it wasn't a few minutes on each side. I one one charcoal chimney, um, maybe maybe three or four minutes each side just to get some because it's already cooked. I'm just cooking some grease out of it, mm-hmm. getting, getting some that flavor. flavor on it. Then uh, first, so with the beans, you got this is a process. It's not a quick recipe. Yeah, you got to cook your beans, and it usually takes about an hour, two hours total. So I got the Beans rinsed and picked in a pot. Had an old ham bone in the freezer. Threw it in there. Chicken stock, some water, a little bit of onion chopped up. Start boiling them beans. 
Well, you check them, add a little more water if you need to as the cook goes on, but you want to get them tender. And once the beans get tender, you're set. You're, you're pretty much cruised then because you got to saute your trinity, your bell pepper, your onion, your celery, add a little garlic, get that in a pot. You can take the ham bone out. You can leave it in if you want. Get your sausage grilled, or you could cook the sausage in the pan mm -hmm. and then get it cut up, the andouille, throw it in the pot. And then I take a cup of the beans out before I start adding that stuff. I skip that. But I take one cup of the beans out to, as a thickening agent. I mash them up and add them back to the pot when I get all that stuff in there. And it just kind of creams the pot. It yeah. thickens the, the bean broth, the bean juice a little bit. And it makes the texture, the texture of the whole dish really good. And that's it. And then I plate it up with some rice, some beans ladled all around it, another link of that sausage over it, yep. some fresh green onions sliced up, and some hot sauce. And tell me that ain't good. <laughs> it's delicious. I'm not a big fan of red beans and rice. It's the texture of the beans. Well, you don't like rice. And then you don't, you're not crazy about beans. So <laughs> I wouldn't imagine you are. But the sausage, the sausage is good. Huh? <laughs> sausage and the other vegetables, huh? But those were really good for red beans and rice. They were really they good. They are. I, yeah. I mean, you make a really good red beans and rice. You make a really good jump, gumbo, red beans and rice, jambalaya, you know, things like that. And I put the King Cross seasoning in it. Yeah. That's what I flavored it with. Yeah. And you could use any that, Cajun seasoning. You could. You could. I'd stay away from Tony's. Hey, it's salty on you yep. if you use it. Well, I mean, you could just salt, pepper, garlic, uh, cayenne, you know, a little thyme, a little, you know. And call it, call it a day. I will say a bay leaf in there if you want to. Mm -hmm. I will say the best thing that I thought you cooked this week was um, some hamburgers you threw on the grill. Saturday we did, night. we did. <laughs> well, I, we cooked the ham, and then that was the the Instagram day, and that we weren't going to eat the ham till the next day. So I threw some burgers on that night. Well, we, we went fishing, <laughs> and we fished. And had a few beers and went fishing on the dock, didn't yep. we? And then uh, come back. And we thawed out some uh, certified Angus beef ground beef that we got from the grocery store. And, man. I didn't know it was certified Angus beef. Yeah, it was. from Super low. That's why it was so good. Oh, yeah. It was just 80-20 ground chuck. Yeah. and we Nothing did, special. I put a patty them out in the old school. Was that the Tupperware burger press? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes a good, it makes it a quarter pound fun. burger. A yep. quarter pound, perfect thickness burger for the grill. Throw some AP on each side. And that was it, wasn't get it? The, get the grill grates hot on the PK. Four minutes. I Actually, I did like two minutes twist, two minutes flip. Repeat that. Check the internal. And it was about 125. I put the raise rack on there and set them up top. And then I just crep them in slow till they got to about 135. I want them to be, you know, right at medium. Yeah. Put a little cheese on there right before I pulled them off. Let the heat of the burger melt the cheese on the ones that wanted cheese. And that was it. Simple, simple, but man, it was good. Do you think moving it up to the raised rack gave you more flavor too? Well, well just letting it slow down. There. I didn't cook one side too long. Yeah. And they had the little grill marks on them and everything. Oh, good. they were delicious. Didn't that, smash them. I didn't mash all the yeah. grease out. Don't, don't do that. Them. Yeah. Unless you're making smash burgers, don't smash them. So you put them on the grill and didn't touch them. No, I picked until, them up from the bottom, twisted them. Until you flipped them. Yeah. Until and that you, was it. Didn't mess with them. That's another one of those. Simple, simple, simple uh, techniques don't mess with it too much. Yep. I think that's where, you know, a lot of things go wrong. You start messing with stuff too much. I agree. But it was a good burger. I love a good hamburger, and I hadn't had a good hamburger in a, a, a while. Yeah, it was really good. It was the best. <laughs> <laughs> that's so the best good. thing you had all weekend? Over the whole Easter lunch and I guess the strawberry cake and all that? Strawberry cake was good. Hey, we found something. If y'all don't know about this place, what was it? Uh, Sugary's? Sugary's in New Albany, Mississippi. Man, they got a strawberry cake that will hurt you. They ship it right to your door. Yep. It was it's like $79, though. Yeah, it ain't cheap cake. <laughs> but man, it's good. Cheap. I was like, we're going to get a cake. cake. You know, you usually like you make it. one or you buy one from somewhere local. Yeah. But nobody was, you know, quarantine. You got to ship them in. And I was trying something new. Uh, hey, I'm down with that. They got a caramel cake on that menu you want to try sometime. Yeah. They're known for those car caramel really? cakes. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine it being better than that strawberry cake? I'd like to find out. <laughs> I really would. I really would. So, um, what we got coming up this weekend? We're going to do some more Instagram stuff on Saturday. I've already talked about the little ham biscuits that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do 
I got a 10 pound chub of bologna from Sam's. <laughs> yeah, I did. Is that Insta- going to be Instagram? Full. Yeah. I'm on, I'm not probably going to do the whole thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut a half of it up, score it up, make it real pretty. I don't know what I'm going to do with the other half. But then I, my ideal is with it, everybody does smoke bologna where you just glaze it up. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to have my PK fired up. I'm going to put it on the grill grates and get, get it sauced seared. up, season it on all, and glazing it on all sides. Maybe put some more rub on it. Get those sides going good. It's going to be some good bologna. You know, that's my favorite part. Is the so we're doing edges. bologna sandwiches probably with another slaw. Now, we might do a mustard slaw on some bologna sandwich. Yeah, that would work. That'll be good. But that's that my favorite good. part on, of the bologna is the outside that gets, you know, charry, charry crusty, and stuff. So if the whole surface is. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go. That's what, that's what, that's what Saturday is going to be about. Um, that's about all I have to cook this weekend that I know of. Um, we've got another. We're going to try to do our delicious dinner yeah, this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing uh, What's like your a delicious dinner. This well, day? I'm doing a, a mushroom and onion hamburger steak, smoked hamburger steak, and I'm doing it with some mashed potatoes and green beans. Just simple dinner, but man, the smoking the burger, putting the burger out there in the pit, and it'll take about forty five minutes for those burger patties to cook. But there's nothing to it, and then make a brown gravy with the mushrooms and onions, and put that. Put the I'm gonna cook the burgers for about rare. Put them in the pan and put my brown gravy with the mushrooms and onions over it. Finish like them. a cast iron pan. No, just a. No, it'll probably just be an aluminum pan. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like gonna put the burgers. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like okay. the same one I put the butt in. Yeah. Put that back on the grill. Let them let them come up in that gravy. Yeah, uh, with the, with the mushrooms and onions, and then put my green beans on the grill. A little olive oil and AP, and then mm-hmm. make some regular old Yukon Gold mashed potatoes. Okay. Put a little whole garlic in there. Maybe like some garlic mashed or something. Ooh, yeah. But that's going to be, Ooh, that'll yeah. be the delicious, that's my, deli- it's my night to, when it's my night to cook, I'm coming strong. <laughs> I'm bringing it. When's your night to clean? Uh, <laughs> I like somebody at the door. What's up? <laughs> I love, um, I love you, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I love you, what? <laughs> um, so we grinded some butts today. Yeah, we've got, I've got extra butts. We got some. My mom makes the best homemade sausage, and she's been making it for a long time. And I finally got her to kind of write down the recipes, and I've tweaked on them a little bit. So now I got to get the measurements right for the pound of pork because I want to make it to where you could do somebody could do one pound of pork. They go buy. So this is new product alert. Yeah, yeah, in the works. Alert. In the works. Country pork seasoning, spicy Country. and regular. Yeah. It's not pork season, it's sausage season. Sausage season. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's for making sausage. Who don't like country sausage? Nobody I know. Nobody, nobody I'm know. friends with. Yeah, nobody <laughs> I'm friends with. <laughs> um, you know, speaking of sausages, you also did those beef sausages. Yeah, I had some. Those were some I had to freeze and just had to get some room, so I took them out. But there were some Elgin, Texas Hot Links. And I don't remember the name, the brand name on them. Um, it was on the package. It wouldn't. It, it might have been market. South. It might have been Southside Market or Cooper's Market or something like that. I can't remember. I know I had some from both, but I don't. It was a red and yellow and blue label. So Southside's normally black and white, isn't it? But it was beef sausage. Yeah, but it was Texas Hot Links. Is yep. what it was. Hot gut sausage. Those were good. I just grilled them on the PK. Yeah, they were good. I didn't do anything special to them. I just grilled them up, just like I did those the ones for the. Uh, red beans and yeah. rice, and they were, sliced them up, and we snacked on that with some cheese. They were really good beef. They don't come sausage. close. Yeah, yeah, really good beef <laughs> sausage. Anybody says like that sausage pastry. is as good as a, a country pleasing smoked sausage, I ain't never had good sausage. It's not as good as some average pork sausage. It's not as good as Koneka. Koneka's good. It is good. It is good. It's like baseline good, though. It's not a <laughs> <laughs> I like Connecticut. Don't get me wrong. I like Connecticut sauce. Nothing they, wrong with it. You'll have think, some Alabama I just think, people. I just think country pleasing is better sausage. It is. You'll have you've some Alabama heard. people. Yeah. I mean, it blows like away like Smoky Hollow and Brines and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Connecticut does, but it's not as good as country pleasing. It's good. It's just not as good. That's just my personal preference. Hey, take it do what you will. So, what's your recipe? Your big. I hadn't worked that out yet. I got some ideas. I've got a pork loin that I've been wanting to, to, to do. I saw a cool picture on Instagram. I think it was on Instagram or Facebook. It was somebody share. It was a butcher sharing like all the cuts out of a pork loin. The mac, like you know, everybody can go to 
Yeah. Sam just want to buy one of the big ones. Well, it shows you you can get, you know, some stew meat out of the very end, and then like some ribeye, chops. some ribeye chops, and then your two roast, and then your center cut chops, and then some more stew meat off the very end, and yeah. some thin chops, you know, before you get to that. So I was thought about doing something like that. Do we that have way? That, yeah, yeah. They sent uh, Kevin. Kevin sent me one. When he sent me the pork butt, so I got a. I told him, he asked me if there's anything else I wanted. I was like, "Yeah, I need a pork coin too," so I got a pork coin, and I'm gonna thaw that out. It's in the freezer, and I'm probably gonna do something with that next week. I just don't know what yet. I've been wanting to do a pork chop sandwich, but if I got those pork roast, I could do something with that. I don't, I'll work it out. It's probably gonna be pork loin though. Um, I thought you were thinking about doing your old school chicken recipe with thighs. That's probably gonna be a dinner one night. Okay. but I did, yeah. But I do, I did get some boneless, skinless thighs, a bag of those. That would be good to do your barbecue chicken. Yeah. Or maybe some baked beans. For, for a delicious no, for dinner. For a delicious quick dinner. It is good. It's just little marinated chicken thighs. Mm-hmm. And then you sauce them at the end and char them up on a Weber. You've got a lot of chicken trophies from that recipe. Heck yeah, it's a winner. You know those thighs always come from Aldi too? <laughs> I buy the bag of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, soak from them in Aldi. Italian dressing for like a day. And then grill them and then coat them in some sauce and put them back on the grill and just char them off. And it's, Eddie Reed calls it burn ass chicken and it wins. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going, you know, it's not KCBS, but oh, if yeah. you just got a anything Means but layer. poultry yeah. contest, it always does good. So I got some ideas. I got a few, we got some, we got some freezer stock now because I've been hitting the click list up. I've learned to overdo your click list and do it from three different stores. That way you can just about get a comp. You have to go three places and pick them up, but you don't have to touch nobody. <laughs> They'll just put it in the back for you. And then you get what you want sometimes. But now our freezers are full. They're packed. I had to bring <laughs> some stuff up here to the office and put it in there. <clears throat> I'm ready to buy into the freezer. I thought the deal was that we were trying to empty them out. We are. We've a we lot got. of stuff and a lot of videos. We have. I can't help it. I got to I gotta buy meat. I got to buy meat. <laughs> I don't get to go to the stores and walk the aisles and go to the meat shop. At least I can have it delivered. You get, I'm going to order it. I'm going to tell you this. I'm just going to go ahead and warn you. I'm fixing to order a, a case of catfish fillets and have it shipped to the Are house. Are you going to fry them? Yeah. I, I haven't done a video on fried catfish in a long time. I don't know if you ever have, have I you? I don't know, but I'm fixing to show you how to fry catfish. <laughs> Malcolm's way. <laughs> We're just going to call everything Malcolm style for now. <laughs> Malcolm style pork chops. We can't beat those. Oh man, some fried pork chops too. Well, that's well, all I have today. Well, hey, where can you find us? <laughs> if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us, listening to our crazy ramble today, and we'll do it again next week. I can guarantee it. See y'all. We need to get out and get some more stories or something. Hey, we got to do something, don't we? <laughs> it's not very exciting staying at home just cooking all the time. It's all I got. It's all I got. <laughs>